Ladies and gentlemen, today's ceremony will be conducted as an outdoor ceremony. All military personnel will wear headgear and render proper outdoor military personnel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Brigadier General Lance T. Rainey, the Commander of Medical Readiness Command East, welcome to the change of responsibility ceremony. Today, Command Sergeant Major Rebecca M. Booker will relinquish responsibility as the MRC East Command Sergeant Major 2, Command Sergeant Major Alexander L. Patu. We extend a sincere welcome to our distinguished guests. Our, amongst our distinguished guests for today's ceremony are Lieutenant General Mary B. Izagiri, 46th Surgeon General of the United States Army, Commander of the United States Army Medical Command, and her husband, Mr. Joe Izagiri. Command Sergeant Major Timothy Sprunger, Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army Medical Command. Ms. Sarah Rainey, wife of Brigadier General Lance Rainey, Commanding General of Medical Readiness Command East. Command Master Chief, here we go. Command Chief Master Sergeant Tanya Johnson, Senior Enlisted Leader, DHA, Director for the DHA. Command Sergeant Major Kyle Burnell, Medical Research Development Command, Command Sergeant Major. Mr. Charles Booker, Sergeant Major Booker's husband, and Ms. Amaya Booker, Command Sergeant Major Booker's daughter. At this time, Mr. Charles Booker, spouse of Command Sergeant Major Booker, is being presented a token of appreciation, and Ms. Amaya Booker, daughter of Command Sergeant Major Booker, is being presented a bouquet of red roses to thank them for all their support and devotion to the soldiers and family of Medical Readiness Command East.
change of responsibility in simple yet traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the ceremony is the passing of the colors. The very soul of the military unit is symbolized in the colors under which it fights, for they represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major who is the senior enlisted soldier of the unit and principal advisor to the commander. The non-commissioned officer in charge, Sergeant Major Roberson, will pass the colors to Command Sergeant Major Booker, who will in turn pass the colors to Brigadier General Rainey. The passing of the colors symbolizes the relinquishment of responsibility and authority from Command Sergeant Major Booker. The commander will then pass the colors to Command Sergeant Major Patu, charging him with the responsibility and authority that comes with his position. Charge orders for Command Sergeant Major Alexander L. Patu. Let it be known from this day forward that the commander of the Medical Readiness Command East has placed special trust and confidence in your patriotism, dedication, integrity, and leadership abilities. Therefore, you are hereby appointed as the Command Sergeant Major of the Medical Readiness Command East. Command Sergeant Major Patu will now return the color to the non commissioned officer in charge. Ready? Ace! Out, face.
During the early 60s, he helped defend us against uh, the Soviet threat during the Cuban Missile Crisis. So, thank you, sir.
in developing local solutions to close the gaps that were found in critical medical skill sets. She, <coughs> she was critical in ensuring MRC East was ready now and will remain ready in the future. She ensured that all of us in MRCs are not just healthcare professionals, not just providing care in the environment, but we are soldiers, and we are soldiers who are ready to be warriors when called upon by our nation. Okay, but uh, NCOs are the backbone of our army, and they are. I'm going to take the the anatomy analogy just a little further. NCOs are the backbone. Command Sergeant Major Booker is that large L5 vertebra. <laughs> now, most of you have some medical experience. She is that large L5 vertebra of which others are supported, enabling them and their organizations to stand. So, Sergeant Major Booker, Command Sergeant Major Booker, MRC East, MedCom, our Army and our nation are thankful for what you have done over the past 30 years to, to ensure our Army today is ready. And the Army of the future is medically proficient and combat ready as well. Job well done.
for coming today and sharing this moment in person or on virtual. And yeah, it's probably going to have to come to about like 700 pounds. He's in Minnesota, he's probably watching right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and just joining my family in what continues to be one of the most rewarding and humbling times in my career. Little did I know that my future led me to 30 years serving in the United States Army and in my career as command star major for medical readiness for many years. Wow. That's where I took again, and I couldn't have ended my career on a more, on more um, humbling note. I am so blessed to have so many leaders and peers in my life who have had an impact on my career, and I thank each and every one of them for their mentorship, their guidance. Uh, it's these great leaders who provided me the purpose, the direction, and the motivation that I needed to be successful. Because you can't do it on your own. You think you can, but you really can't. You've got to have that push. Um, I tried hard to figure out how I was going to acknowledge everyone. And, and so not to offend anyone, I decided to narrow it down just a few in the interest of time. Um, thank you to all my executive assistants and drivers. Will, Sal, where are you at? Oh my God, that's a team of gentlemen right there. Those are, those are your future NCOs. Your job's not easy and you deserve the pat on the back. You manage my hectic schedule as a command star major, especially one that has a little bit of OCD. <laughs> um, but I, I can't think of your hard work and dedication you're not the one many laughs and the good times we had on the road. Um, each of you is unique in your own way and each of you has made me a better person and a from nature. So best of luck in your future endeavors. You've got a good best. Um, thank you to the entire ARE staff. Wow, you are the ones that get the job done. The continuity that holds the command together while the CG and I are out in battlefield circulation. Thank you for all your dedication and commitment. Thank you for all your support to me that you all provided me. Ms. Ferguson, Ms. Kavar, ladies, you will rock. <laughs> and yes, Ms. Ferguson, we got next week's schedule. <laughs> Thank you to all the commanders, commanders, our majors, leaders, soldiers, and civilians within MRCPs. What an awesome team of teams. You took a star major's readiness and training vision and you operationalized. You train and build the best. As our former MECOM commander stated, if you want the best, build them. You did just that. And I can't thank you enough, because now we have tomorrow's medical warrior and a combat medical ready force. Ma'am, Bob, would you down? <laughs> Forty six Surgeon General. I was a cheerleader all along. Thank you for your mentorship and guidance. I will cherish the time we had together and the lifelong friendship that will be there forever. Many, many TDYs, many, many laughs, many, many airport experiences. <laughs> we won't talk about those, but they will forever be in our, our mind. Many, many subway incidences. <laughs> I wish you and Joe and your family all the best as you conquer your new adventure. Um, Army medicine is truly, truly in the best hands, and I, I will watch from afar. How you continue to move our mental enterprise forward. And thank you, Joe. Thank you for all that you've done for MRC East and now for Army Medicine. And Maurice and I uh, can't thank you to have had both of you in our lives and your family and little Joseph. And so thank you um, for that. Um, so Trump, thank you. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for keeping me focused, keeping me in line. And thank you for uh, even some of your help or conditioning your mind and body with all those wonderful validations. <laughs> we say we challenge ourselves to do more than we thought possible. We, they challenged me. They made me that better start with it. Jeremy, although our time has been short, I appreciate all those discussions we have had, the ability to have a healthy debate on each of our own biases towards uh, readiness and training. Um, that is what makes the team work well. You bring a new perspective on readiness and training with healthcare delivery. One that will ensure we have combat ready medical forces. It has been a true honor to have the opportunity to serve with you, sir, and Sarah. Sarah, you bring so much energy to the team. Your engaged leadership and presence at all of our events that we've had so far is just been a joy. Thank you for all that you have done for Maurice and I, too. All right. Not with Sarah, but let me try All right. I want to thank our family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got me. 
but um, thank you, especially my, my father and my mother um, and my mom who was unable to travel was watching virtual. Hi, mom. Can you see me? Hi, mom. Um, my sisters and brothers, my nieces and nephews, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, and my three stepchildren, my husband was so gracious to let me be part of those lives. He gave four beautiful grandchildren. That's my, that's my retirement right there, my grandchildren. You know, who have made me a grandmother. Um, your support, love for me, and my well paid career has been unconditional. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the support and for sharing the day with me. Thank you also to my extended family, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, who made a trip to support me in this moment this day. Truly means a lot to have so much family support. <coughs> the biggest thank you I give today, though, is to my husband, Maurice, and my daughter, Mike. Oh, Mike. Girl, you ought to get hurt if you didn't show up today. <laughs> All the kids. Uh, your love and support kept me going. I look forward to seeing your career grow and be as adventurous as mine has been to me. I promise that with all the time that I have now, I won't visit you too often. Yes, when I get bored at home, I, I run out of things to do or when the fish are late. So, just get ready for mom. <laughs> Grace, you have been my rock. You have been my sounding board. Your open and honest feedback when I ventilate. And yes, he does get the brunt of everything at home. Um, that's helped me tremendously these past three years. Thank you for your continued support and love. Now, are you ready to have me home all the time? First counsel. So, uh, it's going to be learning how to live and love together once again, because, you know, the job really takes you out of the house. And some of that I don't everything going on. As I was writing my speech, um, I look back on the speech I wrote three years ago when I took this position. And I want us to know if I accomplished what I said that I was going to do was still relevant today as it was three years ago when I said it. Three years ago, we were still regional health command at night, and we were still doing health care delivery. Before we transitioned to mental readiness command, we still readiness and training well with them. I took two comments from my remarks that I feel still ring true today. And my first comment was, and this is what I said, often we are asked, who are you? The typical response is medic, doctor, nurse, etc. But really, who are you? Think about it for a second. For I am a soldier. And as a soldier, it is my responsibility to ensure that I'm fit, disciplined, trained, and ready to deploy at any minute's notice. I think that was good today. These past three years, we, introduced, we were introduced to a new ACFT. Now, if that didn't get you fit, disciplined, and trained, and ready to deploy, you really missed the mark. I busted my butt to get five lane tops and then to get it out of the ACF. <laughs> what a bad. All that, all that work, but you know what it is, that ACFC is designed for what we need on range. My second comment was as a regional health command and landing command sergeant major, one of my focus areas is ensuring that we continue to support the war fighters, creating a medic medically ready force, and continue to have the best. Ready, no report the back off and is trained, disciplined, fit, and ready to fight tonight. I could not agree more that we are the best. The Ready Now MRC in back home. Readiness and training has been at the forefront of what we did at MRC East. I said it three years ago, I'm going to say it again, and it ain't going to change. We provided soldiers training opportunities. CG listed all the competitions and everything else we did. He can be airborne, aerosol, competition, paramedic, death, I can go on and on and on. We challenge our soldiers to do more than they thought possible. These past three years, I've seen MRC East at the best, especially when we were challenged during COVID, Operation Allies Welcome, transition to DHA, all our competitions, etc. There are so many accomplishments I can list that MRC East has achieved, and you here sitting here, you know what they are. You know them. Because it was you and your soldiers who were at the forefront of each and every one of those achievements. You did. You made us excellent in the East. So today I want to leave knowing that I've done my job as a star major, that I provide you the tools and resources needed to be successful on the battlefield and within your organization. And so as a young star major broker, I don't need without leaving a few words of wisdom and guidance that I want you to remind you to put in your toolbox and your thoughts and your, and your words that you speak daily. And we heard a lot of these these last few weeks when we were the whole Army Medicine team was together. First of all, I had this plaque that sat on my desk every day to remind me 
of who I am. Leadership is not in your position, but in your actions. Leaders act. Take ownership of your duties and responsibilities. We heard this one last week, and I have to repeat it today. Leadership is not about you and your ego. It's about taking care of your team. When something goes well, it's, it, it's your team. Not so well, it's you. When you have your soldiers back, they will follow. Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence. They should be able to talk about you and your leader. They should be able to know that you've been there. Create that climate that all want to be a part of. Help them understand the why, the purpose. Your soldiers want to have a sense of purpose. They want to be valued. Enforce standards and regulations. You're not going to know that you're doing outside of that The standard you walk by is the standard you hold. I don't think that went bad. Provide opportunities and challenge yourself to do more than they ever thought possible. This starts by investing in them and training. Train your soldiers to survive on the battlefield. Soldiers who can shoot, move, communicate, and medicate. Trust and empower your enlisted core. They are the backbone of the organization. They want to be valued. Use of the full scope of practice in the MTF. They want to be part of the medical team. If you can't trust them here in your MTF, how are you going to trust them then? If that doesn't resonate, I can say it again. So I'm going to say it again wrong five years. That's all the time. First you have a moment of that we got. I think I asked her out the name and he's yelling at me. You said it wrong. <laughs> I wish you all the best. We have had the privilege of working together for the last two years. So I know that MRC is getting the best CSM. A CSM who will continue to deliver a ready to for us. Medical soldiers are able to deliver combat ready care. Best of luck to you. As I step away today, I step into another venture, one that I am nervous about but excited for. Thank you for allowing me to be your command sergeant of the largest and most diverse MRC of Vietnam. It was awesome serving with each of you. I thank you for being on the Ready Now team, where excellence begins with the E. Army Medicine is Army Strong, Ready 7, signing off the net. Thank you. 
Virtual Lab doing the Sound Salva Theater, the PAL team, and the skate park. Thank you so much. This is, we're going, we're on the right track. And last but not least, Specialist Lopez. When I heard that you were flying from Fort Worth for this event, I was delighted. Thank you, Simon Year Booker. Every time that soldier sings, if I didn't do this, I would do this right there. Thank you. <laughs>
still very nice to like for the force inside of the house and the med and uh, army medicine. So, but uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for, for your mentorship. You have always been welcome to me, even from afar. When you find out that I was coming, you open your arms, put it on your on my on the, your wing, and teach me and coach me. And at times, pull my ears. Yes, we need that. We, we might be some ready, but guess what? I got the utmost respect for you and anybody because we all soldiers together and we can learn from each other. And I do learn from you see every single person. I like an sponge. I will take everything from you, ask you questions on earth, because that's how we get better, so we can make all the people better. That's how it works. Thank you, a mentor. And I know I don't know about it that, that much, but I'll check with you how you do it and, uh, and as a mentor. And thank you. I wish you the best with you, Maurice, and your beautiful family. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please take a moment to wish the man's heart to be